Hi there, I'm Grandma, and today I'm going to read you a book called Stone Giant, Michelangelo's David and How He Came to Be. I think you're going to really like this story. So right here, let's open it up, and here's the opening page. It says, once again, the name of the book, and then you open, and it opens to show a pretty town in Italy. And it says, there was a giant in the city of Florence. It had been there for nearly 40 years. The giant was enormous, it was an enormous block of stone, marble to be exact. It stood three times as tall as any man in the city. It was the color of cream and it was a troublemaker. Let's turn the page here. Oops. Isn't this so pretty? It hadn't started out that way. In the beginning, the giant, as everyone called it, had been part of a glorious plan for the city. City fathers had hoped to have the stone made into a statue. It was to be a statue of David, the shepherd boy from the Bible who killed the giant warrior Goliath. David and Florence were a lot alike. At the time, the city was part of a small, proud republic. It often had to fight against bigger, more powerful kingdoms. The statue would remind people that God would protect them, just as he has protected young David. And look down here, see, isn't this beautiful? This is like the city of Florence. It really does have a cathedral like that and a river like that. And the bridges really do look like that there. Okay, let's turn the page. <clears throat> It says, that was the idea anyway, but things didn't turn out as planned. First one artist, then another started cutting into the giant. One chopped out a space between David's legs. Another one, or maybe the same one, left a bump of stone that looked like a knot for a cloak, but they didn't get very far before they quit or died. So for years, the giant lay in the workyard of the city's cathedral, discarded with a hole in it getting rained on. So that's why there's dark clouds here. It's because it was getting rained on. City officials refused to give up on their idea. They offered the giant to other artists, but even the great Leonardo da Vinci took a look at what was left and said, no, grazie, no thank you. Oh, look at this. One artist already knew about the giant. 26-year-old Michelangelo Buonarroti. Look, there's his picture right there. He had grown up in Florence. The giant had been around since before he was born, but for some years the artist had been busy working in Rome, and such work! The sculptures he had created there had stunned people with their detail and beauty. Look, this is a picture of one called the Pietà. That one is in St. Peter's Basilica right in Rome, right by the Vatican. So he was a very important sculpture. Maybe some say the very best there ever has been. Friends from Florence wrote to Michelangelo. They urged him to come back to Florence. Surely he would be able to do something with the giant, they wrote. There's his friends writing him a letter. Here we go. So Michelangelo came. What must the artist have thought when he saw the poor ruined giant? He took a few measurements. He saw that the stone was badly roughed out and weather-worn, but he saw something else too. There in the stone he saw David, his David. It was as plain as if the shepherd boy were right there before him. David had been there all along, waiting. Michelangelo went to the city fathers and asked to work on the giant. They gave him the job. Maybe they had real hope that he could create something beautiful. Maybe they just wanted to be rid of their big headache. So look, there's that beautiful cathedral again. Okay. Oh, isn't this beautiful? It says, see, these are some of Michelangelo's drawings. Like this one right here. This is for the slave which is in the Louvre. Yeah, that's a drawing for that, everyone. Michelangelo wasn't about to have people gawking at him as he worked. He built a wooden shed around the giant. Then he set, set out his tools, which are his hammers, chisels, and a special drill he called a bow. 
He must have thought it was funny that he was getting ready to conquer a giant, just as David had. He made up a little poem about it. David with the sling and I with the bow, Michelangelo. And see, here's a picture of him getting started. Here we are, it says, on the front of the stone, he drew the outline of his David. Then all that was needed was to carve away what was not David. Michelangelo was young and strong. Chips of marble threw through the air. Some were tiny, others as thick as his fist. If he chipped off even a bit too much, the statue would be ruined. Throughout Florence, rumors flew as fast as the, as fast as the stone chips. The statue would be a triumph, some said. No, said others, the stone was too damaged. It would be a disaster. The people could only listen to the sounds coming from the shed and wonder and wait. See all the people waiting? They were so excited to see the statue. Oh, isn't this a beautiful picture? There's Michelangelo again in the city houses. It says, day after day, Michelangelo worked furiously. Every night he went home, flowered with the dust of not David. He combed bits of not David from his beard. In summer, the stone dust mingled with the sweat on his skin and made a kind of mud. In winter, his breath hung in the air. He stopped only when he had to, to eat or to sleep. See, there's a picture of him sleeping right there. Some nights he was too tired to undress and slept in his clothes. In the morning he began again. He worked from the front of the stone inward. Slowly David began to emerge. Here was a hand, there was a knee. It was as if the artists were pulling David out of the stone where he had been hiding. See, look at that. Isn't that something? I bet some of you are going to be sculptures. Yes, I do, sculptors. Then one day, after nearly three years, Michelangelo put down his tools. He stepped back and looked at what he had created. Where once was an, uh, an unwanted giant had been, now David stood. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at this. Here's a picture of it right there with all the boards around it. It says the statue was nearly 18 feet tall, so it was still a giant after all. All giant statues are not easy to move. The wall of the workyard had to be knocked down so the statue could be hauled out. It was put in a special frame to keep it safe. See, that's the special frame made out of boards. Then the frame was rolled along on logs. 40 men sweated the streets of Florence. Oh, sorry. 40 men sweated for four days to move the giant through the streets of Florence and place it on a pedestal in the city square. Look at him. Isn't it beautiful? It says, Then at long last, the people of Florence got their first look at their David. They had been waiting for 40 years. What a shiver of excitement must have passed through the crowd when the statue was unveiled. The people of Florence had seen David's statues before, but they had never seen anything like this. All those other artists had shown David after the story was already over, still and calm, standing over the dead Goliath. But Michelangelo showed David in the middle of the story, the exciting part, just as David faced the giant. Look at that. Isn't that something? See all the people down here looking at it? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. It said, David was without armor, naked. His right hand curled around an unseen rock. The other hand reached for the slingshot at his shoulder. His eyes were focused on the approaching enemy, as if judging the distance between them. The muscles and veins that Michelangelo had carved from the cold marble appeared to pulse with life. The whole body seemed to be springing into action, about to hurl the stone at Goliath's head and kill him. All those other Davids had been skinny little boys. This David was all grown up. He was beautiful, strong, and powerful. His face shone with defiance. 
This David seemed to be perfectly capable of taking on any enemy, no matter how big. Let's turn the page and see what's next. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It says, and that was exactly how the people of Florence wanted to see themselves. Michelangelo was a genius, they declared, and David was a masterpiece. The citizens of Florence embraced the statue as the perfect symbol of their republic. And Michelangelo, he saw his David. He was just as the artist had seen him when he first looked at the enormous stone. There was a giant in the city of Florence. See that pretty picture of Florence? And there's the David right there. And that's the very end. And at the end of the book, it has a nice little note about the author who wrote this, so I'm going to read it to you. It says, A month after Michelangelo's David was unveiled, in September of 1504, more work was ordered. David's sling and the tree stump behind his leg were covered in gold. Some experts say that David himself wore a crown of gold leaves, and he was given a belt of copper leaves to cover his nakedness. The people of Florence hoped that their David would always bring the city luck, but as it turned out, he wasn't the, in the luckiest of spots. Once lightning struck the statue and damaged the base. Another time, someone threw a bench out of the window just above David's head. The bench hit David's left arm and smashed it into three pieces. A friend of Michelangelo's rescued the pieces. Later, the statue was repaired. Then the giant faced a different kind of danger. Years af year after years of standing in the city square meant year after year of hot summers and cold winters. It meant year after year of rain and wind and dirt and bird droppings. After a few centuries, someone noticed that the statue was looking pretty dirty. Worse, the marble was pitted and damaged. David was being worn away. There was only one thing to do. The statue was cleaned and moved inside for safekeeping. Of course, the people of Florence could not think of a city square without David, so a copy was made to stand in the same place. Now David has been standing for more than after more than 500 years, he is safe and protected. The adornments are gone. People who come to see David today see him as much as he must have looked when he left Michelangelo's hands. And so that is the story of how the David came to be. And so someday when you get to go to Florence and see the David in the Academia, you will know the story of how he came to be and how Michelangelo was the one who sculpted him. You take good care. Love you. Bye. I'll see you next time.